Hello people, in this video we want to look at the types of tracheostomy, just the types, right? But what is tracheostomy? It's a technique of airway management. You're just making a hole, right? You're opening up the anterior wall of the trachea and converting it into a stoma, that is a mouth or an opening on the skin surface, right? That is tracheostomy. There is tracheotomy word, it actually means opening the trachea, okay? But here we're talking about tracheostomy where you are uh, doing this tracheotomy and also airway management. See, you are converting this tracheotomy into a stoma on the skin surface. Okay, so that is tracheostomy. So, what are we going to look at? Just the types of tracheostomy. There is emergency tracheostomy, elective or tranquil tracheostomy, permanent percutaneous dilatation tracheostomy or a mini tracheostomy which is done between the creco and thyro, uh, thyroid ligament so that is crecothyroidotomy. There is yet another type of classification where you can have mid, mid is the most common one and then you can have high tracheostomy and low tracheostomy. Let us look at all the types of tracheostomy in this video. So what is the first one? Emergency tracheostomy. When will you do emergency tracheostomy guys? When there is an urgent need to establish airway, right? There is an urgent need to establish airway and intubation and laryngotomy are not possible or feasible. So understand this, there is airway obstruction and there is urgent need to establish the airway and intubation and laryngotomy are not possible. So that is when you do an emergency. When they are saying laryngotomy here, they are talking about the cricothyrotomy, okay guys? And this is an uh, emergency tracheostomy, they are also calling it a slash trick, slash trick, okay? So did you understand this emergency tracheostomy, guys? When do you think you would do an emergency tracheostomy? We are guessing the foreign body in larynx, what do you say? Now let's move on to elective or tranquil tracheostomy. This is orderly planned routine tracheostomy. This is elective or tranquil, right? So in this elective or tranquil tracheostomy, you have all the facilities available, endotracheal tube can be put, right? And uh, this you are doing under anesthesia, local or general anesthesia. And here there are two types, guys. You have therapeutic or prophylactic. Within the elective, you have therapeutic or prophylactic, mainly telling the uses of this tracheostomy. Therapeutic you will do when you want to relieve the uh, obstruction, you want to remove some secretions or you want to give some assisted ventilation. Prophylactic means as a preventive to improve something, right? Tongue. So let us say you're doing some surgery of uh, uh, the tongue or the floor of the mouth or the mandibular resection or laryngo fissure and you think that there could be some pharyngeal secretions or aspiration of blood or respiratory obstruction that I'm prophylactically they're giving this trick, they're, they're doing this tracheostomy. Usually this is a temporary procedure. Okay, this is usually a temporary procedure, okay? Guys, we are looking at types of tracheostomy. We have finished the um, uh, urgent and the elective, right? The emergency and the elective we have finished. Now, let's go to permanent tracheostomy. So, yet another way of uh, telling different types of tracheostomy would be temporary and permanent, right? Another way of dividing. Now, let's look at this permanent. Okay, permanent tracheostomy. Moving on, guys, the third one here is permanent tracheostomy. Guys, when will you do this? When there is bilateral abductor paralysis or laryngeal stenosis. So, you, what you can see here is the airway is not open. It is not able to abduct. So, there is bilateral abductor paralysis. So, this person will not be able to, um, you know, open his airway and breathe. So, this is paralysis. There is paralysis of the abductor. So, bilateral abductor paralysis is there or laryngeal stenosis is there. Stenosis means what? Narrowing, right? Narrowing kind of thing. So you need airway to breathe. So what will you do here? You will do permanent tracheostomy. There is a yet another statement here that the textbook says, guys, whenever there is laryngectomy or laryngopharyngectomy, okay, so if there is laryngectomy or pharyngo, laryngopharyngectomy, then the lower tracheal stump is brought to the surface and stitched to the skin. So again, they are talking about some kind of a stoma to the skin surface, right? So they are talking how they are doing it. If there is a laryngectomy or a laryngopharyngectomy, the lower tracheal stump is brought to the surface and stitched to the skin. So here they are again talking about the uh, three types of uh, tracheostomy that you have. The high, mid and low. We will come to this. Let us finish off these uh, other two types of uh, tracheostomy. That is percutaneous dilatation tracheostomy and mini tracheostomy. Let us look at both of them. Guys, this percutaneous dilatation tracheostomy, basically this is done in ICU, okay? 
and uh, they don't want to take all uh, the patient to the operation theater for a tracheostomy so they are doing something in the icu what are they doing here basically they are using a bronchoscope so that they can monitor uh, the needle the guide wire and the dilator they are dilating okay that the after dilatation they are inserting the tracheostomy tube so they are using a bronchoscope so the incision where are they making 2 cm below the lower border or of cricoid trachea entry to trachea is in the same place looks like second to third ring it says but the incision what they are saying is 2 cm below the lower border of cricoid entry to trachea entry to trachea is between second and third ring this is the same thing right what we have seen this is the same what we will see in everything but um, this is a mid mid tracheostomy same thing but here what they are saying is there is a bronchoscope that you are using flexible bronchoscope to be more accurate flexible bronchoscope they are using right and uh, <clears throat> using this small caliber flexible bronchoscope to which they have attached a camera okay um, through this they are going to pass the endotracheal tube and monitor the passage of the needle guide wire and dilator okay after dilatation the tracheostomy tube is inserted look at the images here for uh, the dilation and guide wire and all that and look at this image showing here see if this is the thyroid cartilage and this is the cricoid cartilage below this they are indicating the percutaneous tracheostomy okay normal tracheostomy is there here right between the second and third ring this is the second ring and this is the third ring this is the first tracheal ring so between second and third is where you do the standard tracheostomy that's the mid tracheostomy right the complications of this is that there could be paratracheal entry of dilator tracheostomy tube into the lumen hemorrhage damage to posterior tracheal wall and surgical emphysema okay so these are the problems with this percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy lastly we are coming to mini tracheostomy uh, mini tracheostomy or laryngotomy or cricothyrotomy basically uh, when you see this one what do you uh, Let's say it's a mini tracheostomy, right? It is a cricothyroidotomy. They are only telling, or they are calling it as laryngotomy. So where exactly are they making the incision? You can see that in this diagram here. See here, this is cricothyroidotomy. This is where they are making cricothyroidotomy. Is a mini tracheostomy. See, it is much higher. The standard tracheostomy is here. Mini tracheostomy is here between this uh, thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. This is where they are doing. That's why it's called as cricothyroidotomy or laryngotomy, or it is called as mini tracheostomy. So when do they do this? So guys, whenever you see that there is an, a need for immediate airway management, right? In those procedures, what you see is this uh, cricothyroidotomy or laryngotomy comes before the emergency tracheostomy. The, so they are indicating the procedure for ma immediate management of airway. the cricothyroidotomy or laryngotomy or mini tracheostomy they are talking about before coming to an actual tracheostomy emergency tracheostomy okay so cricothyroidotomy or mini tracheostomy basically you are just buying time you know so that you can uh, uh, take the patient to the operation theater and for this procedure there are some commercial kits that are available looks like look at this photo between the thyroid and the cricoid cartilage can you see between the thyroid and the cricoid they are doing this cricothyrotomy or laryngotomy or mini tracheostomy so even this can be done electively also not just for emergency for elective also they have done to clear some secretions before uh, following the thoracic surgery if there are some secretions they are they are doing this uh, as an elective procedure also it is done apparently in this procedure guys the skin incision is um, vertical okay the skin incision is vertical and the uh, membrane is cut in a transverse incision okay so that's what they have shown here right they can then uh, follow this with an orderly tracheostomy so people we have looked at the types of tracheostomy what are the types uh, you saw emergency tracheostomy elective or tranquil tracheostomy it's an orderly or the routine planned uh, tracheostomy then you have permanent tracheostomy then percutaneous dilatation uh, tracheostomy for the icu mini tracheostomy laryngotomy or cricothyroidotomy uh, which is uh, which is actually considered even before the emergency tracheostomy you would prefer a mini tracheostomy okay so uh, which is done in the icu percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy uh, which is done in the emergency emergency you will do mini uh, tracheostomy or laryngotomy or cricothyroidotomy or then you can try emergency tracheostomy uh, which is done uh, in the operation theater the elective or the tranquil tracheostomy and what is this permanent tracheostomy uh, see usually this elective whatever you are trying to do in the uh, uh, op ot can be a 
uh, it can be a temporary procedure then you can also have permanent uh, if there is bilateral uh, adductor paralysis or laryngeal stenosis then you're tr trying this permanent tracheostomy okay guys then we have this um, high mid and low tracheostomy okay so look at this if you see your thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage first tracheal ring second and third tracheal ring between the second and third is what you're doing the standard tracheostomy and that will be a mid tracheostomy high will be <clears throat> above the uh, level of the thyroid isthmus and the low will be below the level of the thyroid isthmus so thyroid gland has this isthmus right where is the isthmus here this is the isthmus so above that will become high below that will become low and mid seems to be somewhere there itself let's see what they do to the isthmus the procedure actually what they're saying in this uh, mid tracheostomy is that the thyroid isthmus is displaced upwards it is displaced upwards or it is divided between the clamps and sutured and ligated so they just displace it or they are actually dividing it and ligating it can you see this photo is showing thyroid isthmus is divided ligated so that also they can do okay so when would you do a high tracheostomy normally you do mid okay for all uh, conditions let us see where, wherever you need then high when do you do high usually they're seeing in respiratory obstruction or larynx carcinoma so high is what above the level of thyroid isthmus and when are you doing this here they're saying it violates the first ring of trachea means what they're going through with the ring or what violates the <coughs> first ring of trachea and they're doing it only in carcinoma of larynx because in such cases total larynx anyways would ultimately they will remove it and the fresh tracheostome can they may they can make it in a better cleaner area looks like okay so that is why they're doing it in larynx carcinoma and um, why they normally don't do a high they don't do a high tracheostomy because it can cause pericondritis of the cricoid cartilage and subglottic stenosis so usually they avoid this so what and all can happen let's understand this <clears throat> so what they are saying is high means what you will violate the first ring okay so if you do this what will actually happen there can be pericondritis of the cricoid cartilage cricoid cartilage is getting affected the subglottic stenosis so below the glottis right you can get have subglottic stenosis right then okay that's it so these are the two things that they're saying that can happen you're going very close to these looks like okay so they don't want to do this high tracheostomy the only indication is the carcinoma larynx where you can make a fresh tracheostome later uh, uh, in a fresher cleaner place down right anyways you will be removing the larynx so you can anyways see larynx then only trachea right so that is how your airway goes right pharynx larynx trachea so instead of doing a tracheostomy they are actually in larynx carcinoma anyways you will remove the larynx so looks like they are doing a high tracheostomy right and then they can do a fresh tracheostomy below right in normal people they don't do this because it can lead to pericondritis of the cricoid cartilage and subglottic stenosis okay then coming to low low means what below the level of isthmus okay guys below the level of isthmus this is and they are doing this in case of respiratory insufficiency looks like so what is the problem with this so they are going you know uh, somewhere below right and what is happening the trachea at this level is deep the trachea is deep at this level and it is close to a lot of large vessels and also there are difficulties with the tracheostomy it can you know, which impinges on the suprasternal notch okay so that is why they don't want a low tracheostomy also so mid mid is the best and that is between the second and the third tracheal ring so guys in this video we wanted to look at the types of tracheostomy and we have looked at so many types of tracheostomy we looked at the emergency tracheostomy we looked at the elective or the tranquil tracheostomy then we looked at the permanent tracheostomy then we looked at the percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy done in the ICUs then we saw the mini tracheostomy or the laryngotomy or the cricothyroidotomy in another type of classification you have high tracheostomy mid tracheostomy which is standard and the low tracheostomy guys uh, so a, a yet another classification you can simply mention temporary and permanent something like that you can mention then you can say emergency or urgent and uh, elective then you can say high mid and low tracheostomy and we have looked at almost all of these a little in detail okay so we have finished types of tracheostomy bye bye